Some people can fall asleep anytime and anywhere. I am not one of those people. Some folks can fall asleep while sitting up at the computer. <laughs> but it frequently takes me hours to fall asleep even though I'm exhausted and tucked away in the comfort of my own bed. Some people can take a three hour nap even after having slept the night before for 10 or more hours. I'm not one of those people. But apparently Jesus was. In this morning's text we find him fast asleep in the stern of a boat that's being battered by a ferocious storm which has popped up out of nowhere. It's a familiar story that captures the imagination of artists throughout the centuries. It's a story that assures its audience that we can rest in the knowledge that Jesus is in control. With just a word or two, he calms the sea. And when we call out to him from the chaos and troubles that threaten to swamp us, he can transform the storms of our lives into calm and tranquil waters. I like this interpretation of the story. I need it. And maybe you do too. But as much as I would like Jesus to fix everything with just a word or two, it doesn't seem to happen. At least not the way I would like it to be fixed. The U.S. has passed the milestone of 600,000 COVID deaths. And even though things seem to be getting better, it might have been nice if Jesus had woken up from his nap a little earlier than he did. It looks as if mass murders are becoming the norm in the U.S. and family members of the victims of gun violence join in the chorus of this morning's disciples. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? But the storm of gun violence continues to rage. The homeless and hungry in our city don't know where their next meal will come from or where they will be sleeping tonight. And even though our city's leader's response is, it's a complex problem that's not lost on us, I would swear I can hear Jesus snoring in the bottom of the boat. Yes, I would really like this morning's story to be one that assures me of Jesus' power over the storms of life. But it's not. At least not for me. I don't think the reign of God which Jesus preached about and which he lived out has anything to do with the kind of power we are accustomed to talking about. It doesn't have anything to do with the power associated with one political party seizing control from the other. It doesn't have anything to do with one nation dominating another. It has nothing to do with an attempt at overthrowing the government by storming the capital, and it's not associated with wealth or status. Jesus didn't come to flex his muscles. In fact, he came to give up power. When tempted by the adversary in the desert, he refused to use his power to turn stones into bread, and he refused the tempter's offer of power over the world if he would only bow down before Satan. The Apostle Paul puts it like this in the letter to the Philippians. Though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant being born in human likeness. And so when we focus on Jesus' ability to control the weather in this story, I think we may be missing the point. 
In fact, if we look closely, he seems almost reluctant to work the miracle, annoyed even that his sleep has been interrupted. So instead of a story about Jesus' miraculous power over nature, at least for me, it's a story about how Jesus is right there with me through the storm. He hasn't abandoned me. And in fact, he's in the same boat as I am. And it's a story about how even though he's right there, like the disciples, I am afraid that God's presence in my storms of life isn't enough. I too am afraid that the waves that are crashing against me will destroy me. I also want Jesus to fix the mess I've gotten myself into. It's during those times that I wonder if God is even present in the boat with me. And if God is, does God even care? God, do you not care that I am perishing? David Roberts says, I don't really think the miracle in this story is about Jesus calming the storm and taking control. The miracle in this story is that Jesus was with the disciples in the waterlogged and weather-beaten boat, experiencing the same terrible storm, the same terrible waves, the same terrible danger. And that alone should have been enough. At the close of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus gives his disciples a commandment and gives them a promise. He commanded them to spread the word, share the good news, and enlist other disciples. At the beginning of this morning's story, that's precisely what Jesus had set out to do. He says, let us go to the other side. The other side of the Sea of Galilee was inhabited by Gentiles. And then we read, and leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. We are also called to go across to the other side, the other side of our comfort zones. And sometimes that means leaving the crowd behind and going forth just as we are, authentic and vulnerable. But Jesus didn't just leave them with a commandment. He also left them with a promise. And the promise was, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. It wasn't, I'll calm the storms of life. And it wasn't, I'll protect you from persecution. It was, I am with you always. I wonder if that might be what this morning's story is about. I wonder if it might be a story about how Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. And as much as we might want an end to our troubles, sometimes it's comforting to know that we aren't alone in our troubles. Jesus is with us and Jesus cares. I will close with another quote from David Roberts on the subject because he sums it up better than I ever could. God's power isn't in the control of creation or of people, but in being in covenant and relationship with them. It isn't in imposing the divine will or insisting on its own way, but in sojourning with us as we fumble around and make our way in the world. God's power is not in miraculous interventions 
preemptive strikes in the cosmic war against suffering and evil, but inviting us to build a kingdom out of love, peace, and justice with God. God's power is not in the obliterating of what is bad in the world, but in empowering us to build something good in this world. May we rejoice in the presence of God in our lives, and may we join with God in building something good in our world. Amen.